So if the old fashioned is one of the oldest cocktails in the book, why is there so many ways to make it? And how does yours measure up to the pros? In this video, I'm gonna share with you three variations and the secret ingredient to leveling up your old fashions at home. You wanna know that secret? Don't go anywhere. Hey everyone, I'm Shay with Mixology Flared. Before we dive into the first two variations of the old fashioned, let's break down the four ingredients that make this amazing cocktail. From the whiskey that you choose, to the bitters, the sugar, and even the ice. Yeah, the ice. The ice is the most important part of any cocktail, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's talk about the sugar first. Now the choices of sugar that you have to make in this cocktail is really important, and that's how you understand how to manipulate this cocktail from home use, in the club, or in a speakeasy, and that's how the pros change their old fashioned from setting to setting. Depending on what bar or restaurant, some mixologists will choose an uncut piece of sugar, like the white or the brown demerara sugar that you're used to seeing. Other mixologists choose the perfectly square white piece of sugar cube that you can get at any local grocery store. But whenever you're at home, it's always just easier to make a simple syrup. So that's what we're gonna do today when making our home version of the old fashioned. Start with a fresh glass and your simple syrup that you make at home. Now the simple syrup that you make at home is just 50-50 sugar and water. Take a cap or a bar spoon right into the bottom of the glass. You're gonna to wanna to grab your Angostura bitters. Now I know that there's a variety of bitters that you can get at the local grocery store, but you wanna look for the one with the yellow top. The recipe calls for three to five dashes. I personally choose four, but it's completely up to you. The most inexpensive bottle of whiskey that I found today was Jim Beam, right around 10 bucks. And I'm sure you have a shot glass like this lying around your home. The recipe calls for two ounces of bourbon. Now the great part of doing it like this is that you don't have to muddle a sugar cube like you would in a restaurant. All the ingredients are already mixed together. Now this is the part of the creation of the cocktail that really changes from the home bartender to the pro bartender. Your refrigerator ice is full of impurities and that's why it's cloudy and white. Where a big piece of crystal clear ice like this that you would get at most of your restaurants and speakeasies, but you can really order these from an ice company that's in your local area and have it delivered to your home. It really steps up your home old fashions. But on a side note, you don't have to stir it as long as the other big pieces of ice because the dilution of this ice is really fast. So when we talk about a balanced cocktail, there's gotta be just enough water in this drink to kind of smooth it out. And if you don't have any bar tools at home, you don't really need them. Give it a little shake like this, stir it with your finger. But if you really wanna save the turtles, you can get a paper straw or a Surfside sip straw like this and just stir it. Now, if you go out to your garden, pick a fresh orange like this, bust out your cutting board, your favorite knife, cut off a little peel like this, and all the good oils are on the outside of the skin. You wanna squeeze that over the top of the cocktail like this. One, two, maybe give it a little twist, run it along the outside, and drop it right in. This is the best home version of an old fashioned that you can probably make, given the circumstances of refrigerator ice. Let's give it a try. It smells really good right off the top. Now let's talk about the pro version. All right, now what's the difference between the home version and a pro bartender or mixologist version? Let's talk about it. A pro bartender usually starts with a mixing glass like this to make all of the ingredients in. We'll do the same. When I'm at work, a nightclub, a bar, I use the regular white sugar cubes like this. I drop it right inside. A pro bartender, Sometimes we'll have the Angostura bitters right out of the bottle. Other pro bartenders will have a little fancy dropper like this one. I still do the same, four drops, but you can choose three to five, really is your choice. One, two, three, four. If you drop one or two drops of soda water right on top of the sugar cube, it's gonna help dissolve the sugar cube faster. Grab a muddler like this, break up that sugar cube, Grind it, turn it into a paste. You don't want chunks of sugar laying at the bottom of the cocktail when you're all done. Today we're gonna do bullet bourbon. The cocktail still calls for two ounces of bourbon. A pro bartender is gonna have some hand cracked ice readily available to stir cocktails. We're just gonna break it. So it's a little easier to manage and stir. And while I'm stirring this, if you could go hit the subscribe button, that'd be amazing. Some pro bartenders actually say 30 to the right, 30 to the left. Just give it a good 30 seconds or so. I like that. Let's drop a big rock in there.
Grab your orange and a peeler. Peel off a peel for the garnish. Remember, the oils are on the outside. So when you're squeezing the oils onto the cocktail, squeeze it down and into the top of the drink so it doesn't go all over your bar. One, two, give it a little twist. Drop it right down in there. Your pro old fashioned. Let's give it a taste. Ah, it's amazing. I love the aesthetic of the big ice cube. It really sets this drink apart. Now let's get into the third variation. This is how we've separated our old fashions from the rest of the pack. Now you see the old fashioned is such a subjective cocktail. It really is up to you to take the template, the simple template of the old fashioned, whiskey, sugar, bitters, and kind of make it your own. Really understand how to manipulate each one of the ingredients, what options you have to play with out there, and how to make it your own. A couple ways that we figured out how to change up our old fashioned, make it completely our own. One, our garnish is a little bit different than most. We also ordered this ice stamp to put our insignia right on top of the ice so each guest knows it came from one of our mixologists. And you can do the same by customizing your old fashioned by getting a signature ice stamp or even a garnish brand to put your insignia on top of the garnish. But enough about that. This is how we like to make it here at Mixology Flared. We always start with a little style. White sugar cube, bitters, a little touch of soda water. Let's break up that ice cube. We really like the Buffalo Trace. Still two ounces. Still hand cracked ice. Stir it for 30 seconds. Dilute that ice. Big cube. Ice stamp. And while the stamp is cooking on top of this ice, we're gonna pour our cocktail. So our garnish, the way that we garnish our cocktail is one lemon peel and one orange peel. And to keep it sexy, we just clean it up a little bit cut the ends off and make it look a little bit more modern. Same as before, all the oils are on the outside of the lemon and the orange peel. Express the oils down and into the cocktail. Little one, two, and little twist. Drop that right in there. And that's our version of the old fashioned. of the day, but I could. I would be super Larry. Hey, what's up everybody? It's 3 a.m. here in LA, quarantine. I figured I'd make a drink. Maybe I'll make one for you. Maybe you'll enjoy one. Maybe you'll make one with me. We're talking about the $100 Amaretto Sour. That's right, guys. And we're gonna be doing a lot of these, apparently. Really? So uh, stick with us. Hope you guys uh, subscribe to the channel. We'd really like for you to hang out. This is the best Amaretto Sour you've ever had in your life. I promise, if you hate it, you can throw it at me. I'm gonna go through that drink with you today. It's called the Morgenthaler Sour. It's created by Jeffrey Morgenthaler up in Oregon. Uh, he's the owner of Clyde Common Bar. He also wrote a really cool book called The Bar Book. Uh, link in the description. At the end, I'll talk to you a little bit about that. It's really great. There's a little story that went along with that, but I wanted to show you a little bit uh, about this drink and why it's a, a much better, craftier version of what you're used to, the Amaretto Sour. But 
But first, let's talk a little bit about amaretto. If you're not familiar with what amaretto is, well, it's an Italian liqueur. It's a liqueur meaning that it's low ABV. Uh, there's not a lot of alcohol in it. I think it's like 56%. Uh, 56 proof, 28% ABV, popularized in the late 70s and 80s here in the States. So this is not that. And I'm gonna show you a, a little bit classier, sexier, a more sophisticated amaretto sour. And I think you really like that. So let's, let's make the drink. Uh, first off, you're gonna need a mixing glass. You're gonna want a mixing glass. That's where you're gonna put all your ingredients in. That's how you're gonna make the drink. First tool you're gonna need is a teaspoon. Just gonna put a little bit of sugar in there. The amaretto is extremely sugary as it is really sweet, so you don't, you don't need a lot of sugar to really balance this out. The next ingredient is fresh lemon juice. Uh, one ounce lemon juice. Next ingredient, uh, star of, well, today's episode. Uh, amaretto, stay. Three quarter ounce. We're gonna use this Serrano Amaretto today. That's what I picked up the uh, first time I had this cocktail. Uh, it was used with the Serrano. Whatever Amaretto you can find, most of them are really tasty. Try a couple, make your favorite. I like this one. Next ingredient is, is the gasoline. Why I say it's the gasoline? Because this is the cast strength. This is, this is the key ingredient to this cocktail. Uh, makes it not so much of a of a girl drink. It pumps it up. Okay, once you ha once you add this ingredient that I'm going to show you right now, puts a little hair on your chest. It makes this this drink stand out. So it's overproof bourbon. This one's 122 proof. Woodenville bourbon, made up in Washington. We only want three quarter ounce in this. That's it. Just enough. Give it a little kick. Give it a little kick. Okay, traditional sours. Call for an egg white. I know you're freaking out right now. It's okay. It really creates this velvety mouthfeel when you add an egg white to a cocktail. Really, if you haven't already, try it out. If you're used to traditional sours, okay, traditional sour. Let's go for it. Hopefully, I can crack this first try and not get all the eggshells in the drink. Let's go for it. I'm trying to make a fool out of myself. This one-handed stuff is always kind of tricky. Let's go, come on. Okay, so dry shake. You really want to emulsify all these ingredients together and the best way to do that and really get a good foam at the end when you're pouring this drink is to dry shake this, meaning no ice. Just shake it up without any ice first and then you're going to add some ice, shake it again. I know it's an extra process, but whatever. Grab your mixing tin. Dry shake it up. Shake it and keep it sexy. Come on guys. Come on girls, you know how to do it. Okay. You just want to see a good froth. It's always a really good trick. You could do this too when you're making eggs in the morning. It really makes your eggs extra frothy. So now we're going to add some ice in here. Okay, we're going to add one big ice. And we're also going to crack some in here to aid the dilution. Jeez. So messy. There we go. That's it. Shake that again. All right. This is how you're gonna get it cold. One eternity later. This is the best pre-party workout you can do right now during quarantine. It's about a, I uh, would say a two and a half pound weight. Really get these shoulders moving. It's probably about good. All right. Set that off to the side. Put your little strainer on there. Ooh, get these ice out of the way. Ooh. All right, grab a glass. Some people say that amaretto sour should be served up. Others say they should serve them on the rocks. I like them on the rocks. Today I'm gonna serve it on the rocks. Hopefully we'll be okay with that. We need some ice.
Jeffrey Morgenthaler created this cocktail. This cocktail needs a lemon garnish. Let's move this aside. For the garnish, spread it right over the top. Remember guys, all the oils and all the essence are on the outside of the skin, not on the inside. So you wanna make sure to squeeze it over the cocktail and spray it this way, okay? Fan it out, lay it right on, on top here. Now, not the bright red cherry. How about a crafty cherry? My favorite, Luxardo Maraschino cherries, Maraschino cherries. These are about a dollar a piece. They're absolutely fantastic. Speaking of a dollar a piece, why is this cocktail a hundred dollar amaretto sour? Okay, one dollar cherry. This bottle of whiskey is easily 80 bucks. For over, most overproof whiskeys are somewhere in between 65 and 85. Some are even more, 100, 110 bucks uh, for the bottle. So it's fantastic with normal bourbon, but it really gives a good kick and a lot of body with the cast strength bourbon. So try to find that, it is a little pricey, but totally worth every penny. Okay, uh, De Serrano Amaretto. Um, I mean, it's not cheap, it's not expensive, but um, fresh juice, of course, always fresh juice. And of course, you know, specialized ice with, um, you know, well, mixology flared ice stamp. This cocktail set me back a hundred bucks, worth every penny. Cheers to you guys. This cocktail is for you. I'm gonna put it right here for you. Oh. I'm kind of jealous. Uh, I, I've already had two, to be honest. Away. Well, if you're making your drinks with honey, you might find yourself skipping a few appointments. That's why in this video, I'm going to share with you two popular his and her honey cocktails that you can make with style this weekend. Did you know that there are over 300 different varietals of honey across the United States? And it's different from region to region based on the pollen that the honeybees pick up from different flowers. Did you also know one of the best ways to fight against the common cold <laughs> is to have some local honey in your diet? I really can't think of a better way to make that happen than to have some honey cocktails. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna share with you the two most popular honey cocktails requested today. The Whiskey Gold Rush and the Gin Bees Knees. And they're both very similar, so you can see that you can interchange the ingredients if you have a more masculine crowd or a more feminine crowd. Crowd. Let's start with the Whiskey Gold Rush. Two ounces, your favorite bourbon. You can grab some fresh raw honey like this. But to be completely honest, this is gonna be a little bit messy. You wanna dilute this honey down, put a little water in it. So we made a solution. It's basically two to one, two parts honey to one part water. Really, it's just to make it pour easy and not stick. You can already see that it's very thick even coming out of the pour spout. Sometimes you just gotta take the pour spout off. Some fresh lemon juice. Same as the honey. Three quarter ounce. Now we need some ice. Now if you're at home, your refrigerator ice is just fine. While I'm shaking this cocktail, if you wanna go right down there and hit the subscribe button, that'd be awesome. That's enough. Simple, three ingredient cocktail. Lemon, honey, whiskey. That's it. Grab some big ice cubes for your cocktail.
for this one, I'm just gonna give it a nice lemon peel right over the top. There you go, Whiskey Gold Rush. And for your partner, the bee's knees. You can do it on the rocks or you can serve it up. If you have somebody that doesn't really like whiskey, that's why we're gonna do this with the Aviation Gin. Two ounces. Three quarter ounces of fresh lemon juice. And if you wanna pre-make your honey syrup, do it in a nice bottle like this and save it for a week. Three quarter ounce fresh honey syrup. Get some hand cracked ice. Make it a mess. Make sure that's really sealed and shake that really hard. Did you hit that subscribe button? Right now, hit it. Your Whiskey Gold Rush and your Gin Bee's Knees made with Aviation Gin. Very interchangeable, three easy ingredients. Gin, lemon, honey, whiskey, lemon, honey. Why do you keep doing that? So the whiskey sour is one of the most common whiskey cocktails that you could order at a bar. And if you ordered anyone lately, it probably looks something like this. Yo, bartender. Yo, man, what's up? Hey, let me get a whiskey sour. Whiskey sour, what kind of whiskey? You got bullet? Jim or James. Okay, uh, Buffalo Trace, you got Buffalo Trace? Look, man, all we got is Jim Bean, James. All right, I'll take Jameson. <laughs> 18 bucks. What? And that is wrong on so many levels. Whiskey with sour mix, okay? Sour comes from a sour template. If you're not in a speakeasy or a craft cocktail, you're gonna get a sour mix. Let me just read you the ingredients. This is one of the most popular sour mixes that you'll find at a private party or a local bar. Let me just read you the ingredients. Water, high fructose corn syrup, lemon juice from concentrate, not fresh, citric acid, natural flavor, sodium benzenate to preserve freshness, sodium citrate, Sodium meza blah 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 fight. It's an antioxidant. Contains sulfites, polysorbate 60, FDNC yellow number five. Let me ask you, do you really want that in your cocktail? Let's talk about how to make a whiskey sour in a mixing glass. Fresh squeezed lemon juice, three quarter ounce. Simple syrup, three quarter ounce. All right, let's take a pause in the cocktail for a moment. The sour in the whiskey sour. The sour template is just the way that most mixologists look at making cocktails like baking or cooking dinner. It's a simple recipe. Lemon juice, simple syrup, or sugar water. Together, mix a sour mix. 
or in plain terms, it's lemonade. So you're getting a whiskey lemonade when you're asking for a whiskey sour. But a classic whiskey sour has egg white. That's what makes it frothy and it gives it this amazing texture over the top. So don't think it's gross, try it. Trust me, if you hate it, you can throw it out. Unsubscribe, then resubscribe and unsubscribe again. But I have a feeling that you're gonna like it and you're gonna wanna be subscribed. Next, you're gonna add your favorite whiskey. Two ounces. I mean, come on, with flair, right to the top. Egg whites. You can use the egg whites already in the carton at the grocery store, but the best thing is to take a cage-free egg, lightly crack it, separate the yolk from the white, drop the white into your cocktail, shaking tin over the glass, make sure it's very tight. As you shake this, the pressure inside the cocktail shaker will expand, and if you're not holding on to it super tight, it's gonna explode all over you, and you're gonna be wearing egg the rest of the night. Give it a good solid shake for 30 seconds. But with the power of YouTube, we'll speed it up. Did you see that? It almost exploded all over me. I guess it's done. You're gonna to wanna to shake it twice. One without ice, that's a dry shake. And then add some ice and shake it again. See those guns, baby? Dry shaking it at first is really gonna froth it up and really emulsify all of the ingredients. You really wanna do a dry shake beforehand because with the egg whites and the fresh lemon juice and really shake it hard, mix it all together. Hawthorne strainer. Let it sit there for a moment and all of the bubbles will start rising to the top. Create a nice thick meringue layer right on top and that's where you're gonna put your garnish. Garnish for this cocktail is just Angostura bitters, the one with the yellow top. In a glass or in the back of your jigger like I'm doing here, put about a quarter of an ounce, grab a straw, dot, couple dots right on top and that'll make your design. And that my friends is a proper whiskey sour not a cocktail that's gonna give you cancer. Now, when you talk about whiskey sours and the sour template, you really take that template, and make a lot of other whiskey cocktails that I know that you would love. One of my favorites is called the Urban Bourbon. It's a whiskey cocktail with strawberries, fresh honey, lemon, orange juice, rosemary, mint, and basil. And if you don't like whiskey, I bet you, if you try this, you will love it. If you're not a whiskey lover, you're gonna like this cocktail. Let me show you how to make it. Better yet, watch this. Now rule of thumb, everyone. When making sour cocktails, it doesn't matter if it's vodka, gin, rum, whiskey, doesn't matter, sour cocktails. If you're introducing egg whites, fruit, or herbs, always equalize the sugar content and the citrus content. You wanna play around with orange a little bit because it can be a little bland. But equalize, three quarter, three quarter, two ounces of spirit, and you'll have a balanced cocktail.
so it's the day after St. Patrick's Day. You got a gnarly hangover. What's the best way to take care of that? Irish car bomb. Hey friends, welcome back to another day shift at Mixology Flared. I want to talk to you about the most important thing to do for yourself after St. Patrick's Day to get rid of that gnarly hangover that you got. It's called a hair of the dog. Just have another Irish car bomb. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do for you today is have two different Irish car bombs on camera for you here. This will make me an official Larry for today. But today I wanted to talk to you about the difference and what I think is a better version of the Irish car bomb. Jameson's Irish car bombs or the proper 12 Irish car bomb. So let's get into it. What is an Irish car bomb? Well, an Irish car bomb is really simple. A beer cocktail, a bomb shot. That means that a shot glass will be dropped right into a pint glass. In the pint glass is gonna be Guinness. In the shot glass is gonna be Irish whiskey and Irish cream. Bailey's Irish cream. So let's start with the first one, Jameson's. Jameson Irish car bomb. Way. Irish cream. The other half. I'm not going to care about layering this because we're literally going to drop it. It's going to explode. No need to get pretty or fancy. Irish car bomb number two. Proper 12. You know that this is Conor McGregor's Irish whiskey, right? Now already, right off the bat, I can tell that, that the proper 12 is much darker than the Jameson. It says same proof. 40%. 40%. I'm just not sure. I have a feeling that the proper 12 is going to be a little bit stronger. Guinness. This one you're going to do the same. Fill it up halfway. So I'm going to split one can of Guinness into both of these glasses. All right, here we go. Proper 12, Jameson, bomb. Go. Cheers. All right, final results. The winner, all day long. Jameson Irish Car Bomb fell a little flat for me. Proper 12, Irish Car Bomb had a little body. I'm gonna choose this one. Irish Car Bomb's two ways, Jameson's versus proper 12. What do you think? Put the comments down below. Let me know what you think of these if you tried it yourself. Basically, you want enough to cover the just the bottom of the glass barely. Okay, so two scans of these. Basically, the ginger syrup is your sugar. Yuzu bitters. Um, I'm gonna do healthy six dashes. Kokori, two and a half ounces. Rice base. It gives a perfect platform for that nice bright ginger and then the yuzu. You can do it over a big cube. Um, this one you don't have to mix and stir a lot. All I want to do is, it's already a little watery because we're using the ginger. So as far as like the texture, we're not like trying to um, mix the paste in. So basically what I'm doing is stirring down for temperature. So I'm adding the fresh ice on top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some sea salt over top. Grapefruit's gonna accent that. Grapefruit and the rice and the kokori go really well together. Sea salt, not kosher salt. So we're gonna spray this over top and we're gonna make like a little flour. There we go. It's St. Patrick's Day. And we're gonna celebrate with an Irish coffee. Apparently this isn't the way you're supposed to make it. In the past, I posted a video on my Instagram of an Irish coffee and got absolutely lit up by some of my friends that are truly Irish, telling me that everything about that drink was wrong. So today I wanna address some of those issues. Now I realize most of my audience is American and most of you are gonna make your Irish coffee the same way that I did for 15 or so years. For almost 30 years, my family owned an Irish pub in Marina del Rey, California called Brennan's Irish Pub. Many of those years on St. Patrick's Day, thousands of people swarmed into that bar and they were absolutely overwhelmed. So they always called in some extra bartenders, probably slanged four to 500 Irish coffees. And the way that I made it is probably the way that most of you make it at home. Quick and easy, right? A sugar cube, a healthy dash of the cheapest Irish whiskey you could find, probably a little bit more than you should, some super strong coffee, whatever you got, and some whipped cream right out of the canister that you got from the local grocery store. 
But I'm here to tell you that that is all wrong. With the help of my friend, I am Sam Lynch, and he says, and I quote, Sam is an Irishman, and he cannot deal with not pointing out how wrong this is. First, use a sugar syrup made of brown sugar, not a sugar cube. Good coffee is key. The true trick is having enough syrup so that the density of the coffee and the whiskey mixture is thicker than the cream. Pour the cold, unwhipped cream on top using the back of a bar spoon to ensure that it doesn't pour too quickly. Do not whip your cream in a cocktail shaker. It is a rule. A true Irish coffee has little to no air in it and is a really dense, heavy cream with a high fat content. Hope this helps. Sam, it helped very much. Thank you, sir. So you thought you could get away with just the white sugar cube and some cheap Irish whiskey. Not so much. Now there are a few ways that you can go about doing this. Let's talk about some of the sugar. You could choose a demerara sugar and make a thick demerara syrup, leave some granules at the bottom. That's a good option, not the correct one. Now most bars only have simple syrup. You could use that. But as our friend Sam says, that's not the right way either. Hey guys, let's be honest. The original recipe for the Irish coffee is pretty vague. Cream as rich as an Irish brogue. Coffee as strong as a friendly hand. Sugar sweet as the tongue of a rogue. And whiskey smooth as the wit of the land. That is the original recipe for an Irish coffee. But with all of my research and all of my hate comments that I keep getting, this is the best way that I learned how to do it. But before I can do that, let's make some coffee. Step one in making your Irish coffee is to warm up your glass. You don't want to put a hot beverage into a cold glass or a room temperature glass and immediately drop the temperature. You want to keep it hot as long as possible. It's only going to take about 10 seconds and we're done. The sugar that I've been told to use by 318 English Irishmen Did you understand a single word of what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> is a rich brown simple syrup. You're gonna to wanna to use half ounce, three quarter ounce at the most. A good strong whiskey, ounce and a half, is something that's gonna really hold up to the coffee. I'm using Powers, it's nice and strong, and then fill it with your coffee. You wanna use a really strong coffee, and check it out, Sam. I have even got very, very, very cold heavy whipping cream. So take your spoon, pour it over the back of your spoon, create a layer right on top. <laughs> trying to layer the cream on the top of an Irish coffee can be extremely frustrating. If you're trying to make your bar version of this, let me show you a trick. Take the spring off the front of your Hawthorne strainer. Take your mixing tin, drop it right in. Add your cream. Shake it for no more than five seconds. Take the back of your bar spoon, layer it right on top. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that are not gonna agree with this method. Just drop me a comment, let me know you're still my friend. And that, my friends, is your Irish coffee. One bonus cocktail for everyone that stuck around to see the end of the video. If you like your coffee cold or you really like cold brew, try the iced Irish coffee. Welcome back, friends. It's Anders. I'll put the link down in the description. It is an absolutely amazing variation, and I think you'll like it.
Did you know that the Texas tea is just like the Long Island iced tea, but it doesn't have any gin in it? But have you seen the turtle on my straw? How cute is that? Now I understand, I've worked in countless bars and next to a hundred fantastic bartenders. Everyone makes these drinks a little bit different. I get it. East Coast, West Coast, Europe, everyone has a little bit of a different recipe. But I have three drinks in front of me, the Long Beach Iced Tea, the AMF, and the Tokyo Tea. And even the Texas Tea, labeled right here in the TGI Friday's Master Drink List. So I expect somebody out there to roast me in the comments. Go for it, please light them up. Let me know how you make it at your bar. And I'm sure it's different everywhere all over the world. But please let me know, educate me while I'm educating you. This is how we make it. This is how I've been taught over the course of the last 20 years that I've been in this business. Now, if you've already seen our Long Island Iced Tea video, this is a refresher course for you. And you'll notice that the Long Island Iced Tea blueprint is vodka, rum, gin, triple sec, lemon juice, and simple syrup. What is different about these drinks? Let's break it down. Now, there's always a common question that we get at the bar or from our friends. What can you make me? What's good here? And I always answer them with, what's your favorite color? Red, blue, or green? It's always a good start of a conversation so I can identify exactly what you're into and I understand what I can actually make for you based on what you're thinking in your mind and what your palate is actually telling you that you really want. So I start with that simple question, red, blue, or green? If your answer is green, I'm gonna offer you a Tokyo tea. It's the same thing as a Long Island, except we exclude the triple sec and add in Midori. It's a green Japanese melon liqueur and I top that with Sprite instead of Coca-Cola. I'm gonna offer you a Long Beach iced tea. It's very similar to a Long Island iced tea, except it doesn't have tequila. And instead of Coke, we're gonna to top it with cranberry juice. You wanna make sure you're using 100% cranberry juice, not cranberry juice cocktail. I understand, it should be blue and not red. It is what it is. Drop me a comment if you're from Long Beach and you know what I'm talking about. Da, 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 da. It's the one and only Tico Double G. offer you an adios, or you know it as an AMF or an adios mother but we can't say that because it's YouTube and we'll get demonetized. The adios is the strongest out of all these three cocktails that we've just talked about. It's exactly like the Long Island iced tea. We just switch out triple sec for blue curacao, which is exactly like triple sec, it's just blue. And we top it with Sprite instead of Coca-Cola. You can easily remember the adios recipe because it's blue and the word adios is Spanish, so you can remember tequila. And always remember that the lime is always good with tequila. whiskey in your Texas tea, by all means, go for it. That's just not the way that I learned how to make it. And I kind of think it makes it a Kentucky tea or something like that.
If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, double bump that bell. Make sure you're notified every single time we're doing another crazy thing somewhere in the world or making some amazing cocktails like this. We'd love to have you back at our bar anytime. Thanks again. We'll see you later. Cheers.